Welcome to Real Food. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Otoro. Otoro is a very special cut of um, tuna fish. Um, this is um, Otoro steak you've got in front of me. It is frozen. I already half defrosted it and um, I will be further processing um, this. Um, well, I'll, I'll be further defrosting it and then I'll be... Um, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to eat it. Quite often it's it's um it's usually eaten raw or with very light um heat processing. But before we go there I would like to, to tell you what a toro actually is. As you can see it's a it's a very fatty piece of tuna. You would never see this kind of um fat deposit in your conventional tuna in your supermarket because this cut, this fatty cut, it comes from the belly of, of tuna and it's considered one of the best um, most highly prized pieces of tuna and um, the reason why it is so is exactly because of these fat deposits and the meat itself as you can see there are uh, lots of um, um, sections um, filled with this fat not only this fat makes um, um, tuna meat very very delicate and very it, it literally melts in your mouth but it is also incredibly healthy because as you can imagine this is your fish oil fish fats that are incredibly beneficial for you I discovered Otoro accidentally when I first tried it in in a Japanese restaurant and I can honestly say after trying this cut I I find normal n normal tuna, normal cut, um, very difficult to eat. I mean, I can eat it, it's nice, but in comparison, this is like, um, it melts in your mouth, and normal tuna, as you know, um, it's quite meaty, it can be quite hard, depending on how you cook it. So, um, so there you go. But today what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, cut a small piece um, here. Um, well, what I'll do, I'll actually... Um, yeah, probably here, and I will put the rest in the fridge, probably half of this, yeah, something like this. It is still frozen, I just want to keep um, the other half in the fridge, um, so that, um, because I'm only going to use half, I don't want to eat, this steak is quite large, so I bought it in um, in one of the London uh, London's um, fine food um, suppliers, I think it's called Fine Foods. I don't know if they're actually based in London. They might be. So here's what it looks like in in um, um, in the intersection. So you can see there's a lot of fat in there. There's a lot of um, layers and layers of fat, and that's what makes it so um, so valuable. So typically, if um, <clears throat> if you order Otoro, uh, not every Japanese restaurant will even have it because it is so rare well not rare i mean you can get hold of it but it is quite expensive um, and and um, in some japanese even restaurants in london here they don't have it in stock um so, so there are some other restaurants where you you have to ask them to order it for you and they will have it but there are selected restaurants japanese restaurants in london where you can pop in and they will most likely have it in stock um so what i'm going to do i'm going to to cut it very very gently because what I want to do I want to continue uh, my defrosting process but I want to speed it up a little so it's still frozen but you can see how lovely this um, this fish really is because there's so much fat in it look so it's very it's very easy to um, to cut it so still frozen but um, it's ever so tender so I'm not sure if I'm actually cutting it correctly, but um, I'll let the experts um, review, maybe Japanese experts review. But can you see what I want to show you is these um, de fatty deposits um, between the, the layers of meat. Um, tuna is generally uh, quite meaty, so um, and depending on what you do with it, it can, it can in fact be... Um, difficult to chew even, um, but this one, I'm sure it will be absolutely amazing. So here we are. So what I'm going to do, I am actually going to um, to very lightly grill it um, on pieces of lemon. So I'm not going to uh, fry it, because it's such a delicate piece of meat. 
I'm already damaging it here a little bit. But I wanted to basically speed up um, my defrosting process. And to be honest, I'm not doing it right because from what I read, you have to defrost it in um, by putting um, this steak into um, a container with ice cubes. And this is simply to ensure that your defrosting process becomes um, very gentle and um, the texture, the delicate texture of this fish is not damaged in any way by this process. So there you go. So here we are. So I, I actually want to um I want to to smell it. Yeah, it's got just um delicate um meaty, fresh fresh meaty um smell. I think after this, I'm also going to put it into um, into a container. Okay. So this last piece, I decided to cut into. Um, these smaller segments are um, more like cubes. I think this will work just as fine um, because it would be difficult to cut um, this last piece any other way. So and now I think I'm very I'm now ready to um, gently to gently um, uh, fry. Well, I don't want to call it fry. It's just going to be small amount of heat with lemon with pieces of lemon. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, here's my frying pan. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add some olive oil. This is simply because I don't want my my Otoro um, fish to to be too much uh, acidified by by the lemon because the, the the flavor is so delicate with Otoro. I don't want it to to be too um, um, you know well not contaminated, but I don't want it the lemon to overpower my Otoro pieces. So now I've got my um okay so you can see there's a little bit of heat coming up now. So I'm going to put my Otoro pieces, they're so gentle, like this. You know what? As I pick them, because there's so much fat in them, they start falling. So I'm going to reduce the heat immediately. Um because again I don't want my Otoro to become too to process. So this is yes, so this is what I'm going to do. Very gentle. Okay, my lens is now getting um steamed. Okay, well let me change that. So as you can see because these um these pieces are so gentle and can you see how fatty they are? There's so much fat in them they really don't need huge amount of cooking or processing. In most cases, they can be eaten raw. In fact, if it's really, really fresh, I would eat it raw myself. But because it has been frozen and I kept it in my freezer for several months, really, I just wanted to make sure that the, the surface, um, the outer surface, is has some a little bit of um, cooking and processing. Uh, because the outer surface would be exposed to oxygen and it might have some small amount of oxidation. But I think it's now ready. So you, you can see how beautiful these um, these colors are. There's, there are even rainbows because there's so much fat in there. You can see these slightly rainbow um, you know, layers in there. So I think this is pretty much it. And then with a little bit of um, with a little bit of soy sauce, but only a touch um and anything else you might like just to just to um you know add additional flavor but even like this it will be absolutely fantastic so let me um i will now transfer these into a separate plate so here we are i've got this special plate for my tuna pieces 
Ta-da! So it goes here. Mm, I want to smell one. Mm, it smells amazing. Okay, so here we are. Here are my tuna pieces. So what I will do, I will add a little bit of um, soy sauce. And that's about it. You know, I'm not going to do anything else. And this is what my um, cooked Otoro tuna steak looks like. I've got some soy sauce. And it's so delicious that you see, and so soft and tender that even you know, it breaks as I transfer it from the frying pan. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me wish you bon appétit and we'll chat again soon. <laughs>